Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Jean Hilaire Obama Jean Hilaire Obama was a Gabonese politician who was active in Gabon's pre colonial and post colonial era. He occupied the office of President of Gabon in a period of great political instability, but he was in office for less than 48 hours before he had to vacate it. Strange, right? Let's check out the full story. Born into a Fang family near Libreville on the 10th of November 1912, Obama was dealt a cruel hand by fate when he lost his father at only 8 years of age and his mother at 11. The responsibility of looking after the young Obama then fell on one Abbe Jean Obama, stepbrother of Leon Mba, who would later become president of Gabon and Obama's arch political rival. He enrolled Obama in a Roman Catholic mission for his primary education. Later on, Obama worked as a school teacher. In 1931, Leon Mba helped Obama get a job with the custom service at Libreville. In 1935, he was transferred to Bangui and then a year later to Brazzaville. In February of 1942, Obama got the privilege of meeting the colonial administrator Felix Ebue and he was taken under his wings, becoming his protege. His relationship with Ebue turned out to be highly rewarding as it got him selected on the 23rd of February 1943 as one of the very few Africans chosen for promotion to serve in the European section of the civil service. Also on the 1st of January 1944, Ebue appointed him president of the Municipal Commission for the Poto Poto section of Brazzaville, Congo. Sadly for Obame, his mentor Felix Ebue died suddenly in March 1944. This loss notwithstanding, Obame was already around the corridor of power and he got a position as advisor to the Governor General Andre Bayardel. The Governor General encouraged him to run for office and he returned to Gabon to campaign. In 1946, he became Gabon's first representative to the French Assembly. He was re-elected in June 1951 and continued to work to develop Gabon's politics. He was the backbone of the Gabonese Democratic and Social Union UDSG. He was re-elected again as a deputy in 1956. Obama remained in elective positions as a deputy until Gabon became independent. When Gabon became independent in 1960, Leon Mba became the president and he appointed Obama as his foreign minister even though he was in the opposition. But Mba soon broke ties with Obama when the latter refused to merge his party, the UDSG, with Mba's Gabonese Democratic bloc BDG, to form a one-party government. As part of a ploy to remove Obama from his legislative seat, Mba appointed him President of the Supreme Court on the 25th of February and later claimed Obama had resigned from the National Assembly. To make his own stand clear, Obama resigned from his position as President of the Supreme Court. This made matters more complicated for Mba. Mba would go on to dissolve the National Assembly in January 1964 and set up strict conditions for elections that forced the opposition to boycott the elections. With all the drama happening in the country's politics, it rose to a new height when on the 9th of February 17, 1964, members of Gabon's military carried out a coup and arrested the president and the president of the National Assembly. Obama did not know anything was happening until he was called by the French ambassador to Gabon who informed him of the event. In the morning of February 18, members of the Revolutionary Committee arrived Obama's residence and drove him to the government office 
where they named him president. As the new head of government, he called the French ambassador Paul Kusseran, assuring him of the safety of foreign nationals and asked him to ensure the French military does not intervene. But French President Charles de Gaulle was not going to sit back and allow a new government take over its former colony as Mba was a very loyal ally to France. The next day, French troops in Dakar, Senegal and Brazzaville, Congo entered Gabon and restored Mba to power. During the operation, one French soldier was killed while about 25 died on the Gabonese side. With Mba back in power, Obama fled Libreville but was later caught and tried. In the course of the trial, he insisted he was never part of the planning of the coup even though he came into power as a result of it. He said that he formed a new government after the coup in line with the constitution. On the 9th of September, Obama was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years of hard labor and 10 years of exile on a remote island. Although he was not very popular during his political career, when he was imprisoned, he became a hero in the eyes of the public. When Omar Bongo succeeded Mba as president, he had Obama released in 1972. Obama thereafter ceased from participating in Gabon's politics and went to live in Paris. He returned to Libreville in 1981 and Bongo appointed him as a special advisor. The position was largely honorary. On the 12th of December 1984, Obama's home in Libreville was bombed by extremists but he and his family escaped unhurt. He died in Libreville on the 16th of August 1989 at the age of 77. Some believe that Gabon would have been a more democratic nation had Obama served as president instead of Mba who was more of a dictator. What have we missed out of this biography of Obama? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.